This is a cheap dashboard camera I got. I really just um, spontaneously added it to an eBay purchase because it was only about £11. And for that, for a camera with a, the screen and all this sort of recording functions, <coughs> it was, you know, worth buying to play with. So <coughs> I used it in the van and the image was great during the day, really sharp and clear during the day, but at night time it seemed unusually dark, even compared to an old webcam, uh, webcam, dash cam. And I wondered, the nature of the image was such that I wondered, does this still have an infrared filter on it? Because really the best um, car uh, cameras don't have the infrared filter because that means they, they basically pick up more light at night. And it, this also produces actually quite a good colour image. So I took it to bits, and for reference, you can remove this whole front assembly. It tends to be a bit of a one-way operation, though, um, and this comes into lots of little bits. But I went in the hard way, first of all, before I discovered that this could be removed, and it's easier to take it out from the inside, and you can get to put it back in again. But when I unscrewed the lens, and it is glued in into its focused position, I discovered... that it does indeed have the infrared filter in it. So if I pop that out, it should theoretically increase its darkness um, responsiveness um, at night time. It should make it much more sensitive to night driving conditions. And that's quite important here because um, this is an island and it's not got much in the way of street lighting. But while that's off, it's useful to note that you can actually then fine tune the focusing by turning that. And to be honest, I'd say just get rid of this whole thing completely. It makes it more versatile. The camera itself has a, a good colour screen in it. It's actually really quite good. It's quite an impressive camera. Um, the screen's clear. Um, it's night vision LEDs are not. They're blue. What, what the hell is that going to do apart from tell people you've got a... a I don't know, maybe it's so you can emulate being a police vehicle or something, but it's certainly not going to help uh, with a blue reflection off the windscreen. Not that the infrared really ever helps in the night vision effect, because all you see is a reflection on the windscreen. Um, it's got the usual functionality, it's got the menus uh, that you can choose, you know, if it's going to loop around, you can choose if it's going to power itself on when the power is applied and vice versa. All these things, uh, it's just a generic, it's using what I'd call the, the standard software. It can be used as a camera, or it can be used for video, or it can be used for playing back the videos, but anyway, let's take it to bits. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to remove the little memory card. The memory card costs more than the camera such as the, the way of things these days. The first thing I tried doing was um, removing the front and I noticed that this bit in here came out and that's not really the best approach because it makes a bit of a mess when it comes out and doesn't reveal anything. Other than this audio grill material which just so happens to be uh, a sort of fabric textured tape that's completely washproof so not one iota of audio is really going to go through that because it's got a shiny uh, self-adhesive backing on it so you'd actually be better off without that well that's one improvement so I'll stick this back over here because it, it doesn't actually really achieve anything by taking that off what does achieve something is when you take this side off so you slip a small screwdriver down the side of the plastic and there's a loud splintering noise and if you're very lucky, uh, you'll get this out fairly easily. And I've already had it out. And Oh, here it goes, here it goes. It's stuck with adhesive, very sticky adhesive, so it goes on OK again, uh, round the edges. Ugh, right, there we go. Yeah. Hmm. Then, once you've got that off, you can then use a very small cross-point screwdriver. I didn't have a cross-point screwdriver that would go into these screws. They're, they're like almost like watch screws, so that you'd need a very fine driver indeed. So I just use a flat blade driver, which works fine. Another thing, I, I thought... This was quite a nice wee camera just for recording stuff at the bench here, but the, the sound was terrible uh, in the sense that it sounded very muffled and it had a slightly high-pitched tone over the top of it, which is a bit disappointing. 
So I've undone those screws. Now I shall... I'm trying to remember how this comes out. Is it from here or is it the whole plastic thing? It's the whole plastic thing. Unclips. That only goes in one way round. You can see the little clip at the side is slightly offset on one side. And the buttons in that are captive, which is quite nice. So here we have the big LCD scheme, which has got fingerprints on it, because I've already had this open. And now you carefully, you note that these connectors are put through the case, so you have to kind of hike it out. It's not screwed in anymore. You have to kind of hike it out carefully from the back here. And those connectors seem to sort of jam it in a little bit. They're the bit that seems to hold it from just popping out easily. Hmm. Yeah, it came out... Actually, I was going to say it came out easier before, but it didn't actually. It was quite hard to get out, although it really isn't held in by anything. There's no other screws. So I'm just going to wiggle it, and hopefully that'll do it. Now, once you get it out so far, you want to pull out the little speaker here. Uh, this is where the screwdriver can help again. It's one of those little speakers that's just a rubber grommet that holds it in. So that's out. And then to release the camera module itself, which is screwed to the front, you pull this little black clip back the way. And that releases the camera module. The camera module can then be removed. There are four screws in this. The two ones that are central actually hold the camera lens mount onto the board that has the chip in it. So the ones, if you want to take this off, the screws you take off are the ones that are not centred. So that comes out. And the whole camera module comes out, which is quite handy. That's what I originally did to access it. Now, these little bits of plastic fell out there because I ended up using brute force, and you can use brute force to get the whole assembly off the front, the sort of the, the fake camera ring thing. But um, yes, if, if I hadn't done that, you could have clipped it out at this point from inside. But it saves taking it to bits if you just burst it off the front. The camera itself, the circuit board, it's all very neat, and it's got the buttons in the side that, for the, the two buttons that... Um, operate modes. That's the reset button and that's the power button. Interestingly, here's the microphone. This battery could do with an upgrade, but that's okay. This is the microphone and that's why it sounded so muffled, because when I tried this with the case open and the microphone actually pointing away from me, the actual sound quality was really good. It was really impressive. And the only thing that exists still is that slight high-pitched noise. And I don't know if that's something that's been generated in the uh, the digital handling of the signal. Or if it's maybe uh, there's a small analog audio chip here. I don't know um, if it's being processed much. Well, it will be processed a bit. So I wonder if maybe I could just apply local filtering capacitor across that to try and get rid of the, the high-pitched noise. But it's very subtle. It could probably be done in post-filtering just by applying a filter, uh, post-processing. So, yeah. But as I say, once this microphone's exposed, suddenly the, the sound quality is actually very impressive. And I think if I maybe use this again as the car camera, I would just take that infrared filter off. But having said that, at the moment, it's actually quite nice as a little sort of security or or even just a vlog camera, uh, particularly if I drill a hole where the microphone is so it can actually pick up the sound. In fact, you know, I might just... Uh, I'm just going to mark that right now. So, that was in like that. So the microphone's virtually dead centre. So, yeah, actually, the based on the actual speaker, it's about dead centre and about there. So I'll drill a hole there later on. Nice big generous hole, because I'm not too bothered about uh, about uh, stuff getting into the case or anything like that. And that should improve the audio considerably in that. Also now I've removed that um, 
bit of filter material that was just blocking the sound, it should actually sound quite loud and it's a speaker, not that it's got a really not that it's really got what you call a hi-fi speaker, but when it's played in the computer, yeah, actually the audio sounds really good with the microphone exposed. So it's actually it's a toy. All the buttons are captive, which is nice. It's just, it's just useful as a toy. But um, I think with the filter removed, it'll also be useful as its intended purpose of being a dashboard camera, uh, particularly when it comes to the nighttime use. But uh, it's quite good. Actually, I quite like it. Uh, inside, it's quite nicely made, and the price is quite staggering. But then again, it's mass production for you. <laughs>